Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing one of my favorite paint styles. This is the classic way that I used to paint. I'm gonna do a French country farmhouse, really distressed style with a creamy white and some black hardware. So if you wanna see me make over this high boy, just keep watching. I cut this off of a Facebook marketplace for $70 and it was in really great shape except the feet had a little bit of chipping on them so I'm gonna have to clean that up but the drawers and everything were in really great shape. Today's video is sponsored by Dixie Bell Paint Company. I'm gonna be using their paint and products to make over this piece today and just like they normally do on my channel when they sponsor a video there is gonna be a $100 gift card giveaway to their website to one lucky winner. To enter just make sure you're subscribed to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel and this channel as well and then comment down below what product you would like to try and you will be entered and I will announce the winner next week by pinning their comment on this video. I've started here cleaning my piece with white lightning. You just mix this in with warm water and give your piece a good scrub. I am leaving the hardware on it first to get that clean as well and then I'm going to remove that and I will get some clean water and wipe and rinse the whole piece down. I'm also gonna remove my drawers today and paint those separately. This piece is cherry, so I was worried about it bleeding. So I am going to use some boss to seal it and block in that stain. I'm using the white tinted boss since I'm gonna be painting this a light color. Before I primed the feet, I sanded these down and really feathered out that finish where it was chipping. The finish started resisting my primer a little bit in spots, so just for some extra assurance, I grabbed my Surf Prep sander and gave the whole piece a scuff sand with a 220 sandpaper. After I applied the boss, I let it dry for two hours and I only did one coat and then I came in and tested my paint to see if I had any bleed through. I'm gonna be using drop cloth today. This is a really pretty warm white, almost a linen color with some warmth to it. I'm gonna apply it with the oval medium because this has lots of bristles and I'm going for a textured finish today. I'm also gonna have my spritzer on hand because instead of watering my paint down, I'm just going to spray my piece a little bit and spray my brush just to keep it moving if it gets too thick for me. So I painted this little test spot to see if I got any bleed through and let it set and I did not. So I only did one coat of boss. If you still saw bleed through at this point, you could go ahead and add another coat of boss and then paint on after that. I mentioned in the intro that I'm doing a really French country farmhouse distressed look today. This is the style that I started out painting and I think the style is really easy for beginners because you don't have to worry about getting a smooth finish. You're gonna paint on in every direction and get a little bit of texture. And if you have mess ups, we're gonna distress anyways so you can kind of cover some of those up. And I think distress pieces are really child proof. I know I've had little kids in my home and my furniture still looks great because when they bang it and ding it, it just kind of goes with the character of the piece. I also really love using a creamy white like this for this type of style. It just adds some age and sophistication to the piece. I know some people are really scared about using a creamy white, especially if you have some pure white cabinetry or maybe pure white trim in your house, but I find that they blend really seamlessly together. So I'm gonna show you that today. For my first coat, I'm leaving the drawers out so I can get into the frame really well, but when I go to do my second coat, I'm gonna go ahead and put those drawers back in. 
And once I was almost finished, I propped this up on my painter's pyramid so I could get underneath the feet really well. This will take about an hour to dry. Uh, mine dried overnight and I'm putting in my drawers so I can do my second coat now. And for my second coat, I am going to thin out my paint. I didn't do that on the first coat. I just kind of sprayed my brush as I went, but this is really not even a full coat. I like to call this a half coat because I did a primer underneath. I have really good coverage. There's just a few spots that I want to cover. So I like to really thin out my paint for this half coat as I like to call it. Once that was dry, I went ahead and sealed this top piece because I want to put the piece together before I distress it and add some shading and we're going to add some Dixie dirt to it, but I wanted to be able to put the top on. So I sealed this with the spray wax and then I'm going to let this cure overnight and then I will add my top piece on and I can distress and do all my shading and the fun stuff that's going to make this really shabby. Okay, so here she is all put back together and ready for distressing. Now comes the fun part. I grabbed a 400 grit sandpaper and I just started distressing every edge that you see on the piece. On my drawers, I like to go all the way around the drawer front. I love to hit up the corners. Anywhere I have detailing, I distress. I stay away from the flat front of the drawer fronts and the flats of the side. I just think that looks forced when you distress it. But anywhere I have an edge, I just sand that down and I'd like to take a step back every now and then and kind of see how it's going. But I definitely like to have the whole piece put together like this so I can have a vision for where it's going. really love to distress up legs and feet because those are something that's going to get dinged up and naturally wear over time. So I like to really rough those up. Distressing is really subjective. You could go lighter than this or you could go heavier than this. It's really up to you. I'm all done distressing and ready to seal my piece. So I'm just going to use a soft paintbrush to clear back some of that dust. And I'm also going to wipe it down with a tack cloth. Now I'm ready to seal my piece. I'm going to be using the easy peasy spray wax that I used earlier to seal that top. This is really easy to use. You just shake it up and spray it in a two by two foot section and then wipe it in with a lint free cloth. It's going to be dry after 30 minutes and after an hour you can apply a second coat and it cures in six hours. This is really easy to apply and white is such a forgiving color to top coat. It's another reason I like to work with it a lot if you're a beginner. I started with about a half a bottle of this spray wax and this is about how much I use. So for a big piece like that, that's pretty good. Okay, this piece had so much hardware, so I knew I didn't want to replace it because that would have cost a small fortune. So I am just putting these on a little board and I am gonna make them black. I love having a black looking hardware against a creamy white piece of furniture. It just really pops. So I have already cleaned these with that TSP and then I gave them a scuff sand, wiped them off, and now I'm gonna paint them with caviar. Uh, it, you could use any type of brush here. I'm just using one that I had on hand and I'm just really stippling that paint on to kind of give it a metal finish look. Okay, while my hardware is drying, I am going to dive in and start shading this piece just to give it a little bit more depth with all the distressing that we had going on. I'm gonna be using Dixie Dirt in the color Earth for the first time. This is a really fine artisan powder. It reminds me of translucent powder. So I decided to use a makeup brush to apply this. So I'm just using an old makeup brush that I don't use anymore. The dirt needs something to stick to. So I'm gonna do a fresh coat of wax on here. I'm gonna work in sections. And once I wiped this wax in, I did let it tack for about 
about five minutes before I came in with my powder and started shading. You don't want your brush or your powder to get wet, so really make sure that that is separate when you're spraying your wax on. But I just got a little bit on here and then I tapped off the excess just like you would do with makeup if you're used to wearing a loose powder like that. And then I'm lightly gonna buff this into any areas that I wanna see some shading. And it creates like a really subtle, beautiful look. I have used dark wax in the past and I really like that, but this is super subtle. And on top of the white, I really liked that I could control the shading more as opposed to using a wax. And if you have any powder that falls onto your piece that you don't want there, similar to dark wax, you can just take a little spritz of that clear wax and you can buff it right out. So I just repeated this process all over my piece. I found that it was better once I did this section, I went all the way to the top and worked from top down. That way, if I got any powder on a piece that I haven't touched yet, it wouldn't have wet wax on it. So it was easier to work from top to bottom. Just like the distressing, I didn't put any of this on the flat parts, just really the detailing and the outside of the drawers. To finish up my hardware, I did another coat of caviar, let that dry for a couple of hours, and then I sealed it with Best Dang Wax in black. I love putting black wax on top of black paint because it just really deepens it and makes it richer. It's also gonna seal these and protect these. And I applied it with a rag, and as I did that, it naturally distressed this a little bit, and you can see some of that gold coming through, and I love the way that looks with this rustic piece. I let these hardware dry overnight and then I came back in and buffed them and make sure there wasn't any excess wax left in any of the crevices and then I applied them to my piece. Okay, this makeover is complete. Just to remind you, here is what we started off with and here we are now. This is a nostalgic piece for me because I did a piece just like this in Illinois, but I wasn't doing videos back then. I didn't even write a blog post on it. I just love this finish. I love a creamy white distressed look with black hardware and I love it, especially on Queen Anne legs. And I purposely staged this one in front of a very white board and batten wall so that you can see that a creamy white still goes in a house with white woodwork. Thank you for joining me for today's video. Check out some of the other videos I have before you leave. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.